Before we start this video, let me ask you something. Have you ever tried looking at the night sky for several hours and noticed that the stars seem to be moving? Have you ever thought if the stars are really moving across the sky? Or it is because of the rotation of the earth? Or is it because the two planetary objects are moving? In this video, we will describe the early notion of planetary motion and we will compare and contrast the prevailing ideas about it. In the early times, Greek philosophers were able to construct patterns of planetary motion based merely on their observations. They said that the planets in the universe are moving in perfectly circular motion. This idea was challenged by Plato, a Greek philosopher and famous student of Socrates who served as a teacher of Aristotle. Let us have a short background about him first. Plato is the founder of the Academy for Philosophical Works that produced unparalleled influence in the early ideas about the universe. During his era, it was well known that the planets move an irregular movement or irregular manner. For several times, planetary motion seems to change in speed and direction. This leads to the very important contribution of Plato in astronomy. This irrational motion of planets, the constant change of speed and direction, he said, was perhaps due to the fact that planets move in several circular tracks. For Plato, planetary motion includes combination of orbits within orbits where the planets move in clockwise turn within one track. With this theory, he believed that this could resolve in the formation of regular geometrical models, even if the planets seem to apparently behave irrationally. In simple statement, he thought of order from this order motion of planets, which he called saving the appearances. This idea became so influential in Western astronomy that became one of the foundations in formulating models of the universe. But how did Plato come with such remarkable idea through his observations? He explained thoroughly that the stars seem to rotate around the Earth in perfect path. However, he also mentioned the presence of wandering stars, or the stars that travel across the sky that exhibit irregular patterns of motion throughout the year. He then called these wandering stars as planets that moved in uniform and organized manner orbiting the Earth in combination of circles. With this, Plato asked his students to explain these observations regarding the planetary motion. The most notable challenge of the saving appearances is to explain the presence of these wandering stars that technically contradict the observations regarding the theory of the planetary motion. His students challenge him, if the planets move in similar path and perfect circular motion, why there are still apparent irregular motions of planets that wander across the sky? This question became an instant goal of most Greek astronomers and philosophers that led to the formulation of different models of the universe. Remember that nowadays, we are all well aware that the Earth is not the center of the solar system. During these early times, several models are proposed in response to the challenge to play those saving the appearance theory. Now, at this part of the video, we will track the progress of different models of the universe throughout time. The most prevailing model during this time was the geocentric model and it was remained accepted for over 2,000 years. The geocentric model places the Earth at the center of the solar system. And the sun, together with the other planets, are orbiting around it. This belief was contradicted by Nicolaus Copernicus, who suggested that the sun is the center of the solar system. The rise of geocentric theory started when the Greek mathematician Pythagoras suggested that the Earth is spherical in shape in about 500 BCE. This was accepted by most ancient Greek philosophers at that time. Euduxus of Nidus, a student of Plato, presented the first mathematical theory of the universe about a hundred years later. 
Eudoxus proposed a model of the universe to explain the apparent opposite motion of some planets. This means that while other planets are moving in clockwise direction, others are in counterclockwise. He called this apparent opposite motion retrograde motion. In his model, he placed Earth at the center and he uses various spheres to explain the movement of objects. He used three spheres for the sun, three spheres for the moon, four spheres for each planet, and one sphere shared by all stars. These spheres spin around different axes on steady motion. The sun's sphere revolved around the Earth once every 24 hours, while the stars attached to the larger sphere. This is where the idea that the Earth is at the center of the universe was born. Aristotle extended the model introduced by Eudoxus in the 4th century. Just like Eudoxus, Aristotle believed that the Earth was at the center of the solar system, and Sun and other planetary objects orbit around it. He added that the universe is finite in terms of space, but eternal in time. In his idea, Aristotle thought that everything outside the Earth must be perfect. It cannot be as complicated as proposed by Eudoxus, he said. In his model, he showed that the universe was spherical, but at the same time, infinite. And the reason why celestial objects follow a perfectly circular orbit was because they were guided by what he called as souls. The prime mover, he said, the largest sphere, was the reason the stars kept moving in constant motion. This idea, the Aristotelian idea, was accepted by early astronomers. However, in 3rd century, Aristarchus of Samos was the first person to calculate the distance of the Earth to the Sun. He conducted this by measuring the angle between the moon and sun and applied some principles of trigonometry. His findings made him to propose a model that placed the sun at the center of the universe, with earth and the planets moving around the sun. In Aristarchus' model, he described earth as a body that rotated daily around an axis and revolved annually around the sun. Unlike the astronomers before him, he mentioned that the stars must be fixed in a large sphere with the sun at the center. This model, however, was contested by so many Greek philosophers because it violated Greek's philosophical doctrine that the earth is not moving and it is found at the center of the universe. This idea was rejected for so many years. Another notable name in ancient astronomy was the Roman Ptolemy, who adapted Aristotle's geocentric theory of the universe. Ptolemy's idea is that the planets do not orbit in perfect circles around the Earth. Instead, some planets, like Mars, appear to move first then move forward in large loops. He then proposed another model wherein the whole universe moved around the fixed stationary Earth. In his model, he mentioned about the planets moving around the Earth while moving around the sphere called epicycle. This Ptolemaic model set firmly until the early part of the first millennium. In 1543, the sun-centered model of the solar system, which was originally introduced by Aristarchus, was reintroduced by Nicholas Copernicus. In this model, he explained that the Earth is only one of the many planets that revolve around the Sun and that the Earth spins around its own axis. During that time, the Catholic Church rejected the heliocentric model. With this, Copernicus presented a mathematical model that provided an easier mathematical system for the calculation of the planet's trajectory movement, which we will discuss in the next video. To sum this up, let us again examine the models of the universe presented by our early astronomers. We have two general models, geocentric and heliocentric models. The notable names that supported geocentric models were Eudoxus, who said that the sun revolved around the earth once every two hours, while other stars were attached to a larger sphere. 
we also have Aristotle, which also placed the sun and other planets around the earth. He added that the universe must be finite in terms of space, but eternal in time. Ptolemy adapted Aristotle's idea, but he added that the planets do not orbit perfectly around the earth. For heliocentric model, Aristarchus was the first astronomer to propose that the sun is at the center with earth and the planets moving around it. He added that the earth rotates daily around an axis and revolves annually around the sun. This idea was reintroduced by Copernicus, who has proven mathematically that Earth was only one of the many planets that revolve around the Sun. With the invention of the telescope, astronomers have proven correctly the heliocentrism theory. In the next video, we shall discuss some astronomical observations before the advent of the telescope. Again, this is Gilmar de Castro, and see you in the next video.